Ain't no party like a rock star party, because a rock star party don't stop until someone says your party sucks and you decide to just end the whole thing because you realize you're a game development studio and not a nightclub business. In 1999, Rockstar Games were still a fairly new and fairly small video game company, but one that had already made a splash with the success of Grand Theft Auto just two years before. By October of 1999, GTA 2 had been out for one month, but two of Rockstar's bosses were gearing up for their next big launch of the year. A nightclub party. <laughs> I'm not joking. It was called the Rockstar Loft, and I couldn't believe it when I first read about it. Sam Hauser and Rockstar co-founder Terry Donovan were the brains behind the Rockstar Loft. They had moved to New York from London a year before, and they found themselves disappointed with New York's nightlife in the late 90s. Hauser told David Kushner while Jacked was being written that he realized there wasn't too terribly much to do in the evenings. Donovan told the New York Times in 1999, People spent the whole time looking over your shoulder hoping to spot someone more important to talk to. Sam Hauser added to this and said, How many times do you have to be ignored by celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio at some horribly trendy club to know that it's not going to make you a happier person? Now, I kinda get where they're coming from with this. I'm not a nightclub person, but I'm not a Hollywood person either. I could give a rat's ass what these celebrities get up to. And I do hate that it's something that people have become obsessed with. I guess New York's nightlife, at the time at least, is like a reflection of the celebrity-obsessed culture we have here in America. And clearly, to Hauser and Donovan, it didn't hold a candle to London. Because why waste time obsessing over celebrities when you could just have fun with your drunk friends and get sent to the hospital with alcohol poisoning? So that's when these two came up with the idea for the Rockstar Loft, because it's only logical for a video game company to get into the nightclub business. I mean, hell, look, some companies these days are getting into the gambling business. And Nintendo ran love hotels in Japan way back in the day. And if you don't know what a love hotel is, just replace the word love with sex and it starts to make more sense. It was actually part of a plan that Hauser had at the time. They might have made popular video games, but he wanted Rockstar to be more than just a video game company. He wanted Rockstar to be a lifestyle brand. This is why GTA 2's movie was being shown at film festivals, why they partnered with a clothing label to sell Rockstar branded items at Urban Outfitters stores in England, kind of like how they do today with the Rockstar Warehouse. And on the subject matter of the Rockstar Warehouse, I guess them wanting their company to be a lifestyle brand is why it used to look like this. Compare that to today. Uh, which one looks like a video game company, and which one looks like it's trying to be Louis Vuitton? I mean, Jesus, what the hell are fineries? Maybe luxury handbags and wallets. Or maybe just t-shirts and posters. I mean, hell, I even have official GTA 4 and Chinatown Wars t-shirts, and on the back of the tags, in a fancy font, it says London, Paris, New York, Bogota. It's like a high-end clothing label. Anyway, moving on from that, Hauser and possibly others wanted to see Rockstar break out of video games and become something akin to Supreme or Obey. And their nightclub, the Rockstar Loft, would have been a big step in achieving that goal. Soon, flyers promoting an upcoming and mysterious monthly party started appearing around New York City with a phone number. People interested were advised to call the number. When they called, they'd be asked a series of questions by someone on the other line. The questions are as follows. How did you hear about Rockstar Loft? Why do you want to go? If you could take someone, who would it be? What is it you don't enjoy about current nightlife in New York? What's the best movie you've seen in the last two years? Who is your favorite DJ? What has been the best moment of your life so far? These questions were meant to basically weed out the losers from the totally cool guys you really want to party with and be seen around. A lot of people called. According to an article by The New Yorker, Terry Donovan had to have three staff working full-time in his apartment to return these calls. Donovan told Kushner that for the question of who's your favorite DJ, Fatboy Slim would have been the wrong answer. And for the movie question, someone who enjoyed Notting Hill was going to get in over someone who said they liked Cool Hand Luke. New York Magazine also had an article about the then-upcoming venture. According to the article, Donovan and Hauser really wanted this club to be more appealing to people who aren't into the pompousness of celebrity affairs and ultra-high-end nightclubs that they hated. Donovan said, It would be easy to hire popular techno DJ Carl Cox, hand out a lot of flyers for our company, and install some video games. But that's not us. I wouldn't want to go into a club and get bulldozed by security, and I wouldn't want to be charged $8 for a drink that costs 75 cents. I'm not concerned about fleecing people for money because our company already makes a huge amount of money. 
Oh, and in case you were wondering, Terry Donovan hasn't worked for Rockstar Games since he left in 2006, so don't call him a hypocrite. A thousand people had called the number and given their answers, but only 500 cool enough were invited. One of those was Julia Chaplin, a writer for the New York Times who wrote an article about her experience at the Rockstar Loft. To start with, she talks about some of what she answered and talked about over the phone during the interview process. She said her favorite DJs were the ones who also modeled, and for fun, she said, I enjoy attending film premieres with celebrities like Julia Roberts and going to bars like Moomba where I might see Donald Trump. Wait a minute. So they don't want this to be some kind of pompous ass celebrity affair, but then they let someone go who admits them that they only show up to places because celebrities show up? I mean, how's that not the wrong answer? Eventually, the pink tickets arrived in the mail for her and a couple of her friends, and the location was finally listed too. This party was being held in Manhattan's Chelsea neighborhood, and so on October 30th, 1999, the Rockstar Loft was officially a thing. In her article, Chaplin already isn't a fan of the club's name. She says, Enter Rockstar Loft, the oddly elitist name for the anti-elitist party. She even calls her article the anti-elitist elitist club party. She goes on to describe her experience. The bouncer was a nice guy, and for snacks, there were fruit plates set out on folding tables with white tablecloths, just like at summer camp. However, one other thing she didn't like was the fact that there was only one bar and a huge line had formed at it. She describes a very 90s sounding guy who had spiky hair and a Nike sweatband around his head. Captain 90s apparently wasn't a fan of the club's vibe, and he was overheard saying that it was like a Silicon Alley launch party. Silicon Alley being a former term for a part of Manhattan that was a hub for tech companies in the late 90s. Chaplin then says that her friends basically pulled out their cell phones and one of them made a call and found out that it's happening over at Lot 61. Kirsty Hume, Donovan Leitch, Amber Valletta, they're all having a party. And so they all jumped into a cab to head to Lot 61 to be around all those people that I just named that I've never even heard of until now. They spent a few hours there. David Bowie was there, and so was P. Diddy, and so were a few other people who left the Rockstar Loft. And isn't that ironic and kinda sad? Sam Hauser wanted a nightclub for people to escape the pompousness and douchebaggery of nightclubs that already existed, so he forms his own nightclub for the people who aren't chasing celebrities in VIP areas, only to find people leaving because they want to go to the clubs where all the celebs are at. Brilliant. However, Chaplin then decided she wanted to go back since Dimitri from Paris, a DJ, was going to be there and she wanted to hear him. When they got back, there was a guy standing outside trying to hand out tickets for free to the people walking by. Now, like I said, I'm not a nightclub person, I'm not in the nightclub business, but I don't know. That doesn't seem like a good sign when these tickets were supposed to be reserved for a specific group of people and now they've taken to just giving them away on the street to whoever walks by. Chaplin ended the article by basically saying that the whole idea behind the Rockstar Loft was hypocritical and contradictory. You can't have a hot party that's also non-exclusive, and you also can't be an anti-elitist elitist. Sam Hauser was pretty pissed off about this article. He told Jared Kushner, It took one article for me, one journalist to say a bunch of dot-com yuppies and Ralph Lauren t-shirts in our parties, some really snippy, irrelevant, bitchy remark. Damn, this dude must have really wanted to run a nightclub. No wonder we got the After Hours update. Or why you can buy the club in Vice City. Or why Ballad of Gay Tony exists. Because now, when people talk shit about your clubs online, you can just toss them out of a helicopter. Problem solved. But he then said afterwards, then we suddenly realized, we got serious proper jobs here. And that's a good point. I mean, running a nightclub seems like it's a full-time job. Running a video game development studio is also a full-time job. You gotta have some serious ambition and, dare I say it, delusions of grandeur to think you can do both at the same time. I mean, just imagine if that nightclub had actually been a success. Terry Donovan did state that they had considered making it a full-time thing if it was popular enough. But if Donovan and Hauser both became nightclub impresarios, what would have happened to the video games? I don't think they would have ditched it, but, uh, eh, who knows. Oh, one more thing. Let's say you called up the Rockstar Loft hotline and got asked these questions. How would you answer them? I might as well start. I read about it. Because I have to see if I can buy a drink using a shark card. Leslie Benzies. Ooh, or maybe Dan Hauser, because he's oddly not mentioned in anything to do with the Rockstar Loft. Wonder what he thought of it. That it exists. Face off. Fernando Martinez. 
That time I ate green tea ice cream for the first time. God, that was good. Oh, 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 o